Welcome back. Today we're going to be multiplying and dividing radicals. Some of this is a review, but then we're going to get it, make it a little bit more complicated. So let's get started. First of all, let's talk about what we did last time. We simplified radicals, and I want to show you something. So when I'm going down here, I'm simplifying radicals. I was able to break it up into two numbers. One was a perfect square, one was not right, and then I took the square root of one, took it on the outside, Anything that was, wasn't a perfect square, I kept it on the inside, right? Well, this is kind of what I want to show right here. I want you to understand that when we're multiplying, if it's on the inside, I can multiply it on the inside and it stays on the inside. If there were a number on the outside, like 2 and 4 radical 5, 2 times 4, I would keep it on the outside. And then it would be 8 radical 20. Okay, so let's take a look at what that means. Let's try one real quick. I have 4 radical 5 times 2 radical 10. So again, anything on the outside, I can multiply with things on the outside. 4 times 2 is 8. Anything on the inside, I can multiply 5 times 10. That's 50. Now we have to remember that we always need to simplify. That means take any perfect squares out. And right now I have 50, so... 50, I know, is the perfect square of 25 times 2. So 50 is 25 times 2. And the square root of 25 is 5, so that is 8 times 5, radical 2, which is 40, radical 2. There you have it. That's the simple version of multiplying two radicals together. Of course, we can step that up a notch right here. So at this point, we're not doing anything differently in this problem. We have a distribution. And we know that when we distribute, we are multiplying. Um, this, this time, though, we do have the third root. Now, one of the things you need to understand is that if I have a third root, I need, and I can multiply by third roots, then they're going to stay in. But if this is a third root and a, set, a square root, we couldn't do that. So I'm going to multiply the first one. Outside times outside, 3 times 2 is 6. And then I have the third root of 6 times 9, which is 54, minus... 3 is on the outside times 1 is on the outside, so that's 3. And then the, on the inside, I'm going to have 6 times 4, 24. All right, I'm looking for uh, cubes, perfect cubes, right? One, 1 times 1 times 1, 2 times 2 times 2, 3 times 3 times 3. In fact, 54 is 27 times 2. And 24 is 8 times 3. And that's great because these are perfect cubes. So now we have 3 times the cube root of 27 is 3. Take that out. Then we're left with the cube root of 2. Over here, I'm going to take the cube root of 8 out, which is 2. So that's going to be 3 times 2, cube root of 3. And we're left with 18 cube root of 2 minus 6 cube root of 3. And again, we cannot combine these because these are not like cube roots. If this was 18 cube root of 3, then I could combine those, right? But they're not. So that's a single distribution. Let's take a look and see what we got over here. Ooh, now we have a double distribution. So it's a little bit more complicated. But again, this is nothing you haven't been doing for years. You've been doing double distribution since Algebra 1, most likely, hopefully. So the only real difference here now is that we're going to do it with, you know, radicals. So 1 radical 6 times 2 radical 2 is 2 radical 12. 1 times 3 is 3, and then the 6 times 10 is radical 60. That's the first distribution. Now I'm going to distribute my second one. I have to remember that's a negative. So negative 5 times 2 is negative 10 on the outside, and 5 times 2 is 10 on the inside. Then I'm going to multiply that over to the other, the last term, Negative 5 times 3 is negative 15. 5 times 10 is radical 50. And this looks good, but we have to remember we have to simplify. Here we're looking for square roots. So let's take a look. 12 is 4 times 3. 4 is a perfect square, so we can take that out. 60 is 4 times 15. 4 is a perfect square. 10 has no perfect square, so I'm going to leave that as 10 radical 10. And 50 is 25 times 2. 
So if we take that out, the square root of 4 is 2, so this is going to be 2 times 2 radical 3. The square root of 4 here is 2, so this is going to be 3 times 2 radical 15. Again, this doesn't simplify. 25 is 5, so this is going to be now 15 times 5 radical 2, and we have 4 radical 3, 6 radical 15, minus 10 radical 10, minus 75 radical 2. And there you have it. If you look, none of these radicals are the same, therefore we cannot combine terms again. Will there be a time where some of these radicals are the same? There absolutely will be. All right, there absolutely be a time where those are going to be the same. And that's one of those things, like, I feel confident that I don't need to give you an example on that necessarily. That's something by now you should be able to understand. When I have like terms here, I have to combine them. So now we're going to talk about dividing. And a couple of things I want you to realize. So we're dividing two things. Let's say they're in the same radical. Just like when we multiplied, we can separate these two things. So in a, instead of it being the square root of a over b, we can do the square root of a over the square root of b. Sometimes this is very helpful. Maybe we have the square root of 2 over 9. I can't really divide 2 and 9, so I could do the square root of 2 over the square root of 9. And this is great because now we know we have the square root of 2 and the square root of 9 is 3. And that is, you know, excellent. That's exactly what we want. Um, there is a couple of things, you know. Um, so maybe we have this one right here. We have the square root of 4 over the square root of 9. So this would be the square root of 4 over the square root of 9. Again, great, nice. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 9 is 3. Easy peasy, no problems. Uh, it does get a little bit more complicated, though. We have kind of this, you know, hidden rule in math. And it's not a hidden rule. It's just kind of one of those things that we all have to do, and we all buy it by it. And that rule is... You have to do something called rationalizing the denominator. And what rationalizing the denominator means is that there's no radicals allowed in the denominator. So I broke this up, the square root of 4 and the square root of 9, and I got 3, and that's fine because there's no more radical in the denominator. Over here when I broke it up, I have a radical in the numerator, the top of the fraction. I don't have a radical in the denominator, and that's okay. And this goes back a long time before they had calculators. It, this is just an easier number to approximate than if I had a radical in the denominator. Because square roots are hard, and then if you imagine dividing by a square root, I mean, it's, it's even more hard to do without a calculator. So now it's kind of stayed, and it's okay. It's just, it's how it is. It's much like this. Yes, 4, 6 is an answer, but it's common knowledge that you always have to simplify things. It's common, it should be common knowledge now that when you have the square root of 50, you have to simplify that, right, to 5 radical 2. So we're going to have to rationalize the denominator. So how can I make this number a perfect square? Well, if I multiply by itself, if I multiply radical 5 times radical 5, that gives me radical 25, and that's a perfect square. I don't need to worry about the 2. I need to worry about what's inside the radical. But I can't just multiply this by radical 5. I have to multiply this whole thing by something so that it doesn't change its value. And the only thing I can multiply by something that doesn't change its value is multiplying by 1. Now, radical 5 over radical 5 doesn't look like 1, but anything divided by itself is, in fact, 1. So now I have 15 radical 5 on top, because when I multiply fractions, I multiply across the top. I multiply across the bottom, I have 2 radical 25. And then we're going to simplify this a little bit more. So now I have 15 radical 5 on the top. And on the bottom I have 2 times 5, the square root of 25. 15 radical 5 over 10. And again, like I said before, 4 over 6, we need to simplify these. Now you could have simplified here if you wanted... 15 and 10, I can divide both by 5. So I have 3 radical 5 over 2. And that is our answer. We're not allowed to have those radicals in the denominator at all. So now I have 4 
divided by 2 minus radical 2. This is a little bit different than number 5 because here I was multiplying. I didn't really need to worry about this 2 because I'm multiplying. All right, over here, I'm, now I'm subtracting. So before we said if we multiplied by the radical, it would cancel out. So let's see if I multiply by radical 2 on top and bottom here, if that cancels it out. So we would have 4 radical 2 on top. And on the bottom, now this is, I have to multiply everything here. So that would be 2 radical 2 minus radical 4. So yeah, that's going to become a 2, but I still have a radical over here. So that actually, it doesn't do it. So multiplying just by what was in the radical here doesn't actually do it. Now, I want to talk about for a second our difference of squares. When we were factoring back in unit one, we, we learned that the square root of x squared minus, or x squared minus four is x minus two times x plus two. And the reason was that these middle terms canceled each other out. When I multiplied it out, these middle terms canceled each other out. Now, if you think about this as a radical, it's going to do the same thing. We're going to be able to cancel that out. So we're going to multiply by the conjugate. And this is a new term, yeah. The conjugate is the same terms, but a different sign between them. So here I have 2 minus radical 12. I'm going to my, or minus radical 2. I'm going to multiply it by its conjugate, 2 plus radical 2. And I have to do that on top and bottom, because even though this doesn't look like it, this is the same thing divided by itself, that equals a 1. So you can see, difference of squares, it let us do this. We're gonna, it's going to be the same thing here. So this is going to be in parentheses. All right, let's see what we get here. So our first is 4 times 2 is going to be 8. This is just a distribution. 4 times radical 2 is 4 radical 2. Now down here I have double distribution. Now I'm going to show you this, and I'm going to show you a trick in a second, but I think it's really good to do it the long way a few times. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times radical 2 is 2 radical 2. And then I'm going to do negative radical 2 times 2, and that's negative 2 radical 2. And then negative radical 2 times 2 is negative radical 4. So that's a long way. So if you have nothing, so that's 8 plus 4 radical 2. On the bottom, these are exactly the same, so they cancel out. So now I have 4 minus radical 4, which is 4 minus 2. So now I have 8 plus 4 radical 2 over 2. Now, a lot of times this may be all you have to do. But, if, uh, but you need to be careful because, again, we talked about simplifying fractions. This is a fraction that needs simplified. Here's how you know. I have two things up top. If I had more, I would have to look. But it has to be simplified in all of these things. If you're not sure, there's another way you could, you could break this up. You could do 8 divided by 2 plus 4 radical 2 over 2. Then it's obvious that these have to cancel. But if you don't want to break it up, you have to make sure that these all have a common factor that we can simplify. Does 2 go into 8? Yes. Does 2 go into 4? Yes. I can take that out. So 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2 radical 2. So sometimes these will simplify. Sometimes they won't. If this was a number 3, I would have left it as 8 plus 4 radical 2 over 3 because it would not simplify. Okay. Now here's what I want to show you. This was a very long step here. And it's the safest way to do it. It's always the safest way to do it, to multiply it out. You know you did it right if these two things cancel in the middle and we're done with it. We have a perfect square for a radical. But think about this. Really, this comes down to, I know the first and last thing are going to cancel. It really comes down to the first thing squared, which is 4, and the second thing squared, which is radical 4. And because it's a plus and a minus, I'm going to subtract the second one. All right? So over here, I'm going to multiply by the conjugate. The conjugate here is going to be radical 6. Since this is a plus, this is going to be minus radical 2. Then on top, I have to do radical 6 minus radical 2, because this is the same thing. So I have a double distribute on top and bottom now. So 8 times radical 6 is 8 radical 6. 8 times negative, uh, or negative radical 2 is... 8 radical 2 minus 8 radical 2. Now I'm going to do radical 6. Radical 6 times radical 6 is radical 36. And what's the square root of 36? 6. So again, I like to write every step out for you guys, but some of you are seeing that. 
Positive radical 6 times negative radical 2 is negative radical 12. All right, all of that is going to be over. Now I'm going to do it the long way. Radical 6 times radical 6 is radical 36. Radical 6 times negative radical 2 is negative radical 12. Now I'm going to distribute this. Radical 2 times radical 6 is a positive radical 12. Radical 2 times negative radical 2 is negative radical 4. <clears throat> but again, this would have been just squared, right? These cancel out. Let's see what we have. 8 radical 6 minus 8 radical 2. Radical 36 is just a positive 6. Radical 12 is 4 and 3, right? So that's going to be minus 2 radical 3. What's the square root of 36? 6. These canceled. Minus the square root of uh, 4 is 2. 6 minus 2 is 4. So that looks good, but I need to make sure. Do I have a common factor that I can divide all of these by that goes into 4? Well, 4 goes into 8. That's great. Does 4 go into 6? No. Does 4 go into 2? No. What's the factor of 4 that goes in? I can take a 2 out of everything. So I have to take a 2 out of everything. So divide by 2. This is 4 radical 6 minus 4 radical 2 plus 3 minus 2 divided by 2 is 1 radical 3. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And there you have it. All right. So I want you to pause the video and try these two all by yourself. See how you did? I multiplied 2 radical 5 times radical 5 and 2 radical 5 times 3 radical 10. Then I distributed negative 10. Uh, tricks here, we did have combined 6, six minus 1 was 5 radical 50. These actually came perfect. Radical 25 and radical 100. And then we simplified from there. Okay? Over here, I multiply by the conjugate, radical 6 plus radical 7. We got some tricky ones. Uh, radical 42 has no perfect squares in it, so I left it in there. And the other trick here is 6 minus 7 gave me negative 1, so I divided every single thing here by negative 1, and that became negative 2 radical 6 minus 2 radical 7 minus radical 42 minus 7. There you have it. So that's multiplying and dividing radicals. Good luck on your mastery check. Make sure if you need extra help, you get it. Ask your teachers. Ask your friends. Go out and be the change you want to see in this world. See you next time.